Hey everybody, welcome back. I was asked a really interesting question yesterday about the masking dilemma. And um, specifically, we talk about the masking dilemma as the inability to correctly mask. And it's usually in reference to bone conduction testing. But I wanted to mention that the uh, it can also happen with air conduction testing. And so I've set up a special case here in the class program to demonstrate this effect. So you get to your testing and you get to this point where you've done the air conduction and bone conduction thresholds unmasked for both ears. And we're just doing one frequency here, but you could have done all the frequencies. Uh, but just for illustration, I'm just going to go up 1000 hertz. So here the next step is to decide if you need to mask your air conduction thresholds. So um, if we're doing what we what we should do, we say, OK, well, I don't know if this uh, air conduction threshold I got in the right ear is actually a response from the right ear, or maybe it's a response from the bone conduction pathway to the left ear. Since my level is high enough, my interaural attenuation that I'm assuming is 40 dB for, in, for these TDH50 headphones, um, it could be that my presentation level at 40 is crossing over to the non-test ear, losing 40 dB in that process and being heard by bone conduction in the left ear at, um, at 0 dB. So that, that could be the bone conduction threshold of the left ear, or that could be the bone conduction threshold of the right ear. So we don't really know if this ear is responding or if the left ear is responding. So this threshold needs to be masked. So if we turn on our masking, the appropriate level to start masking at is the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety pad. And so we've added that safety pad here. And so we're presenting our masking at 50 and we're presenting our signal at um, 40 and that we're assuming that 40 of that is going to cross over. So we'll present and we get a response. So we raise the masker. No response. So we raise the stimulus. There's the mask. No response. Raise the stimulus. Raise the mask. Raise the stimulus. Raise the mask. Raise the mask. Raise the mask. And at this point, you start wondering, you know, I've just been going up and up and up and up. Um, what's really going on here? Uh, how loud am I actually presenting? I am I just going to keep going? If you keep doing this, you'll end up with no responses and it'll look like you have a dead ear in the right ear when before we got these nice thresholds of 40. So let's talk about what's actually going on here. Let's look at the masking tool to give us a better idea. I'm going to show the true threshold so that we can see what we're actually working with. In this case, we have decided that the correct starting level for masking is 50. And that also happens to be what the true threshold air conduction is in that ear. That 50 dB signal is crossing over. It's being attenuated by 40 dB by going from one ear to the other, interaural attenuation of 40 dB. So that masker signal is being heard in the test ear at about 10 dB HL. And then we have our signal, which is in the test ear at 40, and that's losing 40 dB as it crosses over, and that's being heard in the non-test ear at 0 dB. So if we present this stimulus, it's being heard because this, the signal is crossing over to the non-test ear. So we are getting a response from the non-test ear through bone conduction. And our masker isn't strong enough yet to stimulate the cochlea, only just barely. So right now, our air conduction masker is just barely, it, it's um, equal level, it's not covering it up yet. So if we increase the level of our masker, then we shouldn't get a response because now we have a 0 dB SL crossover stimulus and a 5 dB SL masking stimulus in the masked ear. So now we've appropriately covered up that ear. So then we raise the signal and we get a response and then we raise our mask. And we don't get a response. So we raise this, the signal and then we raise the masker and we don't get a response. Now, this is where lots of people get tripped up because they say, well, Dr. Morgan, check this out. You have a threshold, you're at threshold in the left ear. 
Um, so shouldn't you get a response there and then you would be able to plateau and find the true threshold? And uh, the, the point to make here is that you have to compare the DBSL of the masker and the DBSL of the target. So in this case, we have a stimulus that, yeah, our signal level finally got to the threshold level, so we would expect a response. But that threshold level is 0 dBSL for the, for the masking, or for the, excuse me, for the, the signal. The tone is being heard at 0 dBSL. But look at the SL of the masker. Our masker is at a, such a high level that after it crosses over through bone conduction, it's getting, it's at a, what, a 25 dB SL of masking. So we have, the masker is crossing over at 25 dB SL relative to the bone conduction threshold. And we have a zero dB SL relative to the air conduction threshold. So there's no way that we're going to actually hear that stimulus. At 50, we're barely stimulating the cochlea through air conduction because in this case, we have a massive conductive component to this hearing loss. And so we're just barely, that much sound level is just barely getting the sound down to the cochlea. Meanwhile, we've got so much noise in the non-test ear that that's, that cochlea is vibrating through bone conduction in response to the masker. So the masking tone crossover is being heard at 25 dB SL. And the tone, even though we made it to threshold, that it's only being stimulated at a zero dB SL level. And so it is still being covered up by the masking that's available in the, from the non-test ear. So in this case, we cannot correctly conclude, find the true threshold because we run into a masking dilemma for air conduction. And I know we, I just wanted to do this quick video. I know we normally only talk about uh, masking dilemmas with reference to bone conduction thresholds, but I wanted to show you that you can have it for air conduction thresholds um, if you assume certain parameters about the interaural attenuation that you're using to determine if you need masking and based on your starting level that you want to test, uh, you can run into issues masking air conduction as well. That's it for this video. If you like what you saw, please click subscribe and uh, the little bell to get more notifications. Uh, your support greatly helps us continue to put out more content like this. And we hope you liked seeing the new demo of the new program. This is the upcoming beta version. You're welcome to check it out if you have a subscription. And if not, we hope you'll subscribe to the class program and get started with audiology simulation. Thanks. Bye.